Hello there, sharks and next-gen poker lovers. I'm here with Rosie. You look like a lover. <laughs> I try to be. Good. All right. Today, we are playing a hand at Texas Card House. What are the stakes? What are we playing? We are playing 2-5 here at Texas Card House, which plays very, very deep, and we have 750 effective to start the hand. Only 150 big blinds. You're a short stack. Why are you buying in so short with only 150 big blinds? You know, we're fairly new in our poker journey here at Next Gen <laughs> Poker, Jonathan. So we've just made the switch to 2-5 this year, and we are just easing into it. Nice, as you should, yeah. especially whenever you're moving up in stakes against players who are presumably better than you because they've already won money in playing higher stakes, which they're not necessarily better than you. guys are working hard, studying a ton, etc. But you want to make sure you don't overexpose yourself where you have a lot of your bankroll on the line and uh, in a game where maybe you don't have an edge. Exactly. So ease in, see how it goes. How's it going? It's actually been going really well for us three this year. We're all in the black at 2-5 and hoping to just keep it rolling. Good. Grind it up. Come out to Vegas. Have a party. That's why we're here. Perfect. <laughs> this hand, we have ace-king offsuit in the big blind. Come on, let's turn it around, guys. We got it. Under the gun plus one opens to 20 and the small blind calls. We got a great hand. We're raising it up. I make it $125. But both of them call. You know Texas poker. All right, so we have a raise to, what, 20 bucks? Yep. Somebody calls. You are in the big blind. Yes. And you make it 125. Yeah. Which I think is good. Yeah, we're going big in Texas. I mean, I know the standard. What would you say the standard is? You'd go 3x plus 1 for a caller, yeah. plus 1 out of position. It's as if you've studied the content. Pokercoaching.com, baby. There you go. Um, but in Texas, we just like to make it a little bigger on top of all of that. These people like to call very wide, so let's put money in the pot when we know we have a really good hand. That's very good logic. If they're just not going to fold, make the pot bigger. Boom. All right. Yuri Rays. How many people call? One or two? Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> How do you feel in your mind when you three bet the ace king out of position for a lot of money and two people call you? I'm feeling like we got to hit a flop here, which is just <laughs> hard to do with this hand. It makes top pair top kicker. It makes great yeah. hands, but what, what percent does it hit the flop? What do you say, less than half the time we're going to see the ace or the king? Way less. Way less, about, yeah. About 30%. Yeah, so I'm just buckling up and getting ready to play some tough post-flop poker. All right, let's see if we have to play tough poker or just make top pair. We're off to a flop three ways, which comes 7-4 deuce rainbow, our lovely flop for ace-king. Not an ace or a king in sight, but our range has all the over pairs. I see bet $125 and only under the gun plus one makes the call. He does call though, so we haven't won yet. 7-4-2, about as good of a flop as you can hope for without an ace or a king. Yeah. So it's kind of like you hit. I guess so. And yeah, and that's and we bet it. It's important to realize in the spot, 742 is a very uncoordinated board. And on very uncoordinated boards, hands like ace king high go way up in value because it's way less likely either of your opponents connected. You are against two other players though, so it's actually kind of likely you're against a pair. And I do think you will be against a pair a lot in Texas cuz they'll raise it up with pocket sixes and then call a three bet every time. And then here we are. So you have to be careful to not over continuation bet out of, uh, out of position in multi-way pots unless your opponents are just not going to raise you very often at all. Because if they're going to call you every time or fold every time, it's kind of like you're getting to see the turn. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. I guess in this point I was trying to use my image. You know, uh, me, Frankie as well, we, we have a tight image in Next Gen Poker. Um, and it's worked out well for us, especially in these Texas games and when we have the vlog camera out. When we're filming, people want to get involved with us. They're going to play more out of line. So I think the way to respond to that would be to just bet for value, play really good hands, and make money. I will say that you do not, like a per you do not look like a person who's going to have a tight image in my brain. Oh, that is the best thing I've heard all day. You look as if you'd be insane. Really? Look at your hair. You guys listening to that? <laughs> look, at, look at you. You got a purple shirt on. I mean... <laughs> But you're net. I okay. The, we I mean, look, we play a strategy that we think works based on where we play and the opponents we play against. If that is a tighter strategy, which I guess the slang term is a net, yeah, you could say that. But I mean, we're playing what we think is good poker and it's working. And so I'm using my image here to just see bet on this board and hopefully get a lot of credit. There's something that a lot of players who have a uh, rather extravagant look do at the poker table. They they wear flashy clothing, I'm not saying you do this, but they wear flashy clothing, they got a bunch of gold necklaces on, they're chatting left and right, they take forever looking at their cards, they act like they're gonna play, but then they fold. 
And they do this every time. And the action's on them for like a third of the day, but they never play any hands. There's a lot of value in having an incredibly loose image if you just sit there and play good cards. Because people will give you action as if you are crazy, even though you're just a nice kid. I try to be. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. All right. So you go 125, a third pot, and you get one caller from Under the Gun plus one. What do you think about Under the Gun plus one's range right now? I'm thinking it's the pocket pairs we discussed earlier, you know, the eights, nines, tens, stuff like that, and I'm not feeling too great. Do you think they'll float with nine eight of diamonds for over cards, backdoor draws? You know what? Yeah. Okay. So that's worth noting. I mean, th this is a tough spot with a hand like exactly ace king, because if you check and they bet, you can actually pretty reasonably call. A lot of people make the error of check folding ace king, but in the spot, imagine your opponent does have king queen of diamonds for over cards and backdoor flush draw. They may bet with that, but if you bet, they're just going to fold it. And you really, really, really want to keep in ace queen, ace jack, ace ten, king queen, king jack. So I think the default is to check, but if you do bet, you want to make sure you have a plan for the turn. And uh, well, let's see what your plan is for the turn. Here we go. The turn with about 625 in it is the queen of spades. It brings on a flush draw. We've got about 500 left in our stack, guys. We've got a tight image at the table. This queen is going to scare off all of his middling pocket pairs from jacks down. And we have aces and kings in our range too. This was a tighter player. I think if we're ever going to use our image to rip it in here, now is the time to do it. So what do you say? I go all in for $500. Turn comes queen of spades. Yep. Queen. How do you feel about the queen of spades? Uh, well, obviously it doesn't improve our hand. We still have ace high, but the range of cards we just said we're putting our opponent on, they're not going to like this queen. And we still have all the power-packed monsters in our range based on how we played the hand thus far. So I think it presents us with an interesting opportunity. Yeah, it's a cool spot because if they do have a hand like pocket sixes or even pocket eights now, they're in a pretty rough spot. If they have a hand like eight, seven for a pair, middle pair, that's not great because if you're betting ace king, presumably you're also going to bet ace queen. Maybe even bet king, queen, and king jack, especially if you have a backdoor draw. Yep. So this queen is actually pretty good for your range, I think. And like you said, we still have aces and kings. So... We need to find some bluffs. Question becomes, which hands are best to bluff in this spot? Usually want to have a gut shot or a flush draw or two over cards. All right, we made the third criteria. Ooh, we barely made it. <laughs> now the question here is, remember it went raise, call, three bet before the flop. So do you have hands like ace five suited or ace three suited? Uh, I mean, I don't think I would in these loose Texas I games. In, in Texas, no, I wouldn't, to be honest. I have to imagine pre-flop your three betting very, very strong and linear from the big blind. Yeah. So if we don't have ace five and ace three, do we have 6-5 suited? Probably not. No. So we don't have any of those. Do we have some backdoor flush draws? Yeah, sure. We have ace-jack of spades, ace-ten of spades maybe, ace-king yeah. of spades, but also not a lot of those if you think about it, right? Yeah. So we don't actually have any logical bluffing hands besides the overcards. Typically you want to look for stuff like straight draws and flush draws first, but if you don't have any of those, you need to find something else. So, would, you say, well, would you say it's fine to not have as many... To not be as balanced per se in a game like this, and well, not, definitely <laughs> because well, this is a very this is a game where we want to play pretty exploitative. Mm -hmm. So like we we just listed a bunch of cards that I am I don't have, but I still think it's a good spot. Well, so in situations like this, you want to ask: Do I expect my opponent to overfold or overcall? I think when this queen comes, it's clearly good for your range. They're probably going to overfold, even though I know people like to call in loose, splashy cash games. So if they're just going to snap it off no problem with pocket sixes for 500 and 625, then the bluff's clearly terrible. Yeah. But I think most people are going to find folds, although I don't know. You play the games more than I do. I don't. You tell me. Yeah. In a spot like this, once we, once we do fire this all in, it's, they're not going to be sticking around with stuff like that. Right. So, but a, a big takeaway here is that a lot of people in the spot bluff with only the very clearly logical bluffs, which would be straight draws and flush draws. Yeah. But if you consider your range, you don't have any of those. Yeah. So when you don't have any of those, or almost none of those, you have to find something else to bluff with. And the next best hand is two overcards. Because if they do happen to have a hand like Queen Jack suited that floated, they're obviously going to call. But then you have six outs, and that's nice. Exactly. So uh, I like the shove. Thank I think you. It's good. You know, it's a it's a play I don't usually do. I'm I'm known for not getting too crazy in these games, just value betting, value betting, value betting. But I think it was a good spot, and 
we'll see what happens. Well, if you actually do have a really tight image, which you you don't, but if you actually do have a tight image, then you should be over bluffing because your yep. opponents are going to presume you must have something good when yep. you put in all of your money. Therefore, you should be bluffing them out of their seat. Exactly, and and you're gonna have to check the next gen poker comments, Jonathan. I have a reputation amongst the vlog watchers of being a very tight player. Um, so I do want to start incorporating more stuff like this into my play. If you want to be bluffing more because you now think that you've cultivated this image of being a weak, tight, straightforward, passive nit, then, well, what should you be doing? You should probably be three betting a little bit more preflop and you should be triple barreling it off or but, double barreling it and off that's, And that's where the interesting question comes into play because we're in these games where people still aren't, they don't care. Like, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I've cultivated this image, but the image kind of works. Like being tight is working. And if I do get out of line, more often than not, they're calling because I'm vlogging and they want to make the vlog. They're calling because it's Texas and they don't care. So I'm in this interesting <laughs> conundrum of like, I do want to use the image, but sometimes just being myself is working. You need to use your image against people who care about the image. Okay. Some people will care about the image. Some people want to be sheriff and find a call. Yeah. And uh, you have to figure out who those people are. But if you're playing live poker, especially against anyone on a regular basis, you'll start to see the players who they just call. Yeah. And some people will get to the turn here and just fold pocket jacks every time because they're like, oh, well, you clearly got aces, and they're going to fold. So you have to find where each particular opponent presumes you're going to be very honest. Yeah. Right? So like, no one's really going to believe you're very nut-heavy pre-flop. But on the flop, some people will start making big folds. Sometimes when you start to put in all of your money, that's when people make big folds. Some people don't care. They'll just call every time. So you've got to figure out who you're against. And so once you do that, poker becomes a much easier game. So that's the game, figuring out who is at this table. And, and how they actually perceive you, and if they even care. Because imagine we have a recreational player whose entire goal is to get on your video blog ruining your day. It they're, happens. <laughs> they're willing to get it in with 10% equity if 10% of the time... They're the hero that crushes the young kid's dreams on the video blog. And they're willing to torch 90% for that. Other players, not so much. And you have to figure out those players. And once you do that, it's good to go. So anyway, you rip it in. You get a fold. You win the pot. We do. And it feels pretty damn good. <laughs> As you play higher and higher stakes against better players, you should be incorporating more bluffs yeah. because they're going to find folds. And that's good. It's good to make people fold. Yes, and it, it was scary to bluff with obviously, like we said, no straight draw, no flush draw, just the two overs, but I, I do think it was a good candidate in this configuration to do it. Good job, A+. plus. Keep it up. That's going to be it for today. Make sure you follow Next Gen Poker on literally every platform. The young kids are savvy on all the platforms. What's your favorite platform? Real quick. TikTok. I, I'm uh -oh. a big TikTok guy, yeah. All right, there you go. Get on TikTok. Follow Next Gen Poker there. Good luck. Have fun. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this video, click the like and subscribe button. Make sure you check out Next Gen on YouTube and TikTok and wherever else you like to go. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.